There has been a lot of things going on in the world of 3D lately, with stuff related to Blender, Max, GeoGen, LiquidGen, and other 3D software, which I'm gonna go over quickly in this video. And by the way, if you wanna check out this news as soon as possible, I also have a separate channel dedicated to CG news called CG Vortex. And some of you guys that already watched some videos on CG Vortex think it is someone using my voice using AI. And I can assure you, it's me. So please take a look at the channel and subscribe to receive the latest news. Aquarius is an upgraded version of its predecessor called AQ Measure. And this tool can simulate a range of real world materials like fluids, sand, smoke, fire, snow, you name it. And it features a new material point method, or MPM solver for short. On top of the pick and flip solver for liquids and a grid base solver for smoke and fire. This tool is an open VDB based machine and volume editing plugin for Macs, which is compatible with particles, objects, and of course VDB objects. And the tool provides optimized access to many open VDB functions such as meshing, level set filter, fracture, and tool set sphere functions for rigid body simulations. The MPM does not use meshes, it was categorized as meshless or mesh free, which helps it avoid high deformation, tangling, and advection errors, and many more drawbacks of mesh based methods. Generally speaking, Aquarius uses a node based system and offers GPU acceleration via CUDA, and a single license includes unlimited network fluid simulation, which can be really good for big projects. You can also read about the different features on Magic Picture software website that you can find hopefully in the description. Aquarius works with Max 2018 and beyond, and requires an NVIDIA GPU and CUDA toolkit for hardware acceleration. The plugin on the price side, like other Max plugins, is kind of expensive, with a perpetual license costing $385 and includes one year of support and maintenance. Generally speaking, I would like to emphasize the quality of the sand, snow, and mud effects compared to other plugins in Max. In addition to ease of use and the nodes based system, which takes it up a notch, there is also a free version of this plugin called Aquarius 1.0 Lite. For those who want to test it, or simply for those who can't afford it, the version does not offer hardware acceleration and has a simulation limit of 100 frames. A lot of updates have been coming lately from Autodesk, and now it appears that it is Motion Builder's turn. So let's see what it brings with its 2025.1 update. Just so you know, Autodesk Motion Builder is a 3D character animation software with pre-built moves that allows you to capture, edit, and play back high quality animations in basically what we call an interactive environment. Like the stuff when you see actors wearing mocap suits and doing movements and animations for video game and VFX projects. It is also used for viewing and editing motion capture data. First of all, this update introduces the new USD plugin for Motion Builder. This includes support for loading, displaying, and interacting with static open USD stages. Now, with the added USD support for Motion Builder, you can load a USD stage, including textures and lights, into the viewport and animate it in context without having to import large scenes. You can also interact with the stage via Python. Also, Motion Builder now supports and displays both textures and lights from USD data, and you will also be able to perform basic manipulations of the stage node. There are still some key limitations though, the biggest being that it isn't actually possible to convert USD data to Motion Builder data, or vice versa, which hopefully will be solved in the future. Now, the USD plugin is not the only feature added, because there are multiple workflow and performance upgrades that also have been added such as the possibility to lock a global time mark, preventing them from being moved, and stretch multiple selected clips in loop mode in the story tool. In addition, new shortcuts have been added to quickly change takes and other common tasks. If you never heard of Motion Builder, or if you are interested in it, Motion Builder is rental with a tag price of $245 per year. There is also the new flex where you can get access to Motion Builder with 6 tokens a day with 2 plans for $300 for 16 days and $1500 for 83 days over a year.
JungFX announced in their latest livestream their anticipated liquid simulation software in public alpha and the new 1.2 update of Embergen, giving themselves the title of the master of elements, and they finally announced the public beta release of GeoGen, their new real-time terrain and planet generation software. And this public beta release marks the point three version of the software and brings to the table new features, updates, and fixes. The updates include the addition of spline support for multiple purposes, subgraph support, and new options for detailing, directional color, new gizmo, acute cursor for more control over the effect of your nodes, I mean on the terrain. You can also see the implementation of noise and fractal options for detailing. In addition, the rock and splatter nodes both received some improvements and changes regarding how they work. In addition to improvements regarding the algorithm of the software, I mean the render engine of the software, allowing the preview of more details in the viewport. One of the things to know about GeoGen is that it is completely node-based, thus offering a non-destructive workflow over your mesh. To put it more simply, you will still have the possibility to reverse infinitely even after editing your terrain, and better than that, you can preview your terrain in real time. Having tried it, I can surprisingly say that it is really optimized and can work even on a low-budget PC. And when it comes to pricing, well, first of all, to buy it, you just have to hit their official website of JangaFX where you can see the offers of different plans depending on you as a client. For the independent artists or freelancers and those who earn under a million dollars a year, you can buy GeoGen for $149 that is per year, then you can pay $75 per year for maintenance after that. And you can also choose to pay a monthly $10 per month in addition to other offers. So generally speaking, GeoGen looks to me as a promising software and a nice addition to JangaFX software, especially since it is node-based and it works in real time. This one is a free plugin with the goal of creating a streamlined process with the other software. And from what I can see, it allows you to design characters and animate facial expressions in addition to deploying crowd simulations and bypassing the tedious construction of material graphs and skeletal rigs. The plugin works with characters exported from Character Creator, animations from iClone, and stock characters from its Actor Core online library. The plugin will import the digital human shader and PBR material assignments for characters, outfits, props, scenes, and animations. One of the cool features is the number of environment and rendering settings, as well as rendering presets for the full body and the head in the lock dev tab. Those include 10 preset lighting setups and 5 HDRI environments to preview the imported characters, as well as the option to load your own. Now, if you are using a Reillusion character model, you will find a number of meshes for the body, eyes, teeth, and tongue. And for the body, you will find a bunch of parameters to adjust for refining the basic skin appearance, roughness, subsurface scattering, and wrinkles for achieving lifelike results. In addition to other stuff, you know, which can be adjusted for different effects. The wrinkle system comes with 13 defined areas, which you can select and edit individually. And the recall system in the character creator is separate from the texture maps and its sole purpose, I think, is to add an additional layer of realism. Interestingly enough, the plugin also supports Max Bipad and Cat Rigging systems. Its Body Rig and Face Rig plugin allows you to create quick rigs to work with and pose with. The facial rig controller found in its own tab allows for quick and complex facial expressions, which is great. But bear in mind that this controller only works with models that are set up with a completed facial profile in Character Creator. One of the industry standard craft simulation tools used for movies and TV shows like Game of Thrones, The Last of Us, Stranger Things, Arcane, and a lot more has announced that they have been acquired by Autodesk. And I'm talking about Gollum. The crowd simulation tool for creating realistic and behavior-driven crowd simulations. When I saw this yesterday, I went like, wow, this is good news for my users cause it will hopefully get Gollum for free along with Maya, but on the other hand, it will be under the wing of Autodesk, which is kind of bad news for a lot of people 
because Autodesk is now infamous with its bad practices when it comes to acquiring successful software. First of all, let me tell you about Gollum so you can feel the gravity of this news. Gollum was launched back in 2011 as a craft animation software that can also use Maya's native tools to control crowd behavior. It includes tools for generating automatic variations of crowd characters and help you as an artist by automating repetitive and cumbersome tasks. The Golem workflow is built so that although it relies on AI, you as an artist can always get the last word or the last say when it comes to controlling the results. And by the way, Golem can be integrated into Maya and it is compatible with Unreal, Houdini, Katana, and even Max. It has been used in the industry on hundreds of productions, including Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, Pirates of the Caribbean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, and The Mandalorian, just to name a few. And their last update announced Gollum 9, featuring a new animation engine in addition to 9DOF, which means 9 degrees of freedom animation support. Also, they have a modular rig support and a crowd ML deformer, which is still in beta. This update also introduced joint rig animation support. In addition to direct animation relay, crowd levels for any secondary simulation, and workflow and UI improvements. So basically, a big update with a lot of new and improved features. The new version of AnimCraft, AnimCraft 5.0 is here, and it brought with it a bunch of exciting new features. It was originally released in 2020 as a new tool for building reusable animation libraries, with the possibility to transfer animations between characters and a range of different DCC applications such as Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender, Unity, and Unreal Engine. And the software works with great characters by ingesting keyframes, retargeting them to new characters, and exporting the data in a native format of the DCC application in addition to game engines. And AnimCraft 5.0, the latest iteration of the software, brought with it a lot of major updates aimed at enhancing the efficiency and the quality of animation workflow. First of all, the update includes an AI-based fully-body markerless motion capture system. In addition to a real-time facial mocap for Max and a new option for editing meta-human characters in addition to other stuff. So the main feature in AnimCraft's new update is the AI-based markerless motion capture system. This new tool can extract full body motion from a single video of any format, length, and size. So basically you can import the motion of any character rig supported by AnimCraft, including ADV, bipad rigs, and any FBX skeleton. From what I can see, the tool will eliminate the need for any equipment or external tools. And the system also works locally with high-speed GPU-based computing, which is GPU accelerated via CUDA on NVIDIA GPUs. And with this, I think you can say goodbye to uploading times and waiting for queues of your files to be processed. But the usage, unfortunately, is capped at 365 minutes of footage per year, after which you have to buy the top-up package to process more videos. As for the ones with the AdamCraft license, you will receive several hundred minutes of free mocap time annually, which is great. In addition, it offers a complete suite of tools including foot locking, full body IK, non-linear editing, retargeting, and more. And the system only supports footage from a single camera and of a single actor because any more than that and you will start to have some problems. Additionally, you have to remember to keep everything in the frame for a better experience, although the option to capture multiple actors simultaneously is probably coming soon. And Max users got some new features. Now, with the real-time facial mocap feature, you can use your iPad or iPhone to capture facial expressions in real time and instantly apply them to the character rig. Those captured facial animations can be also applied to any characters which can be rigged by AnimCraft universally. The real-time facial mocap comes with data processing and cleaning. For cleaning the captured facial data, removing noise, and only keeping the important facial expression data. But unfortunately, the real-time facial mocap is only available to iPhones and iPad users only. Something that you might find interesting is that Blender is expanding its capabilities with the introduction of online asset libraries. 
So a couple of days ago, Blender developers released a certain report that will probably pick the interest of all the community. The report covered the discussions and topics brought up during the July's online asset libraries workshop. And these discussions were more like baby steps to scope the project following the new brush asset system that Blender introduced and made available in the alpha version of Blender 4.3. They added points like the integration of these libraries, their content and their organization, along with the next steps they will be taking during this project. The online asset libraries came in following the implementation of the extensions framework. And just like EVNX was a major improvement for Blender users, this new integration brings a fresh and out-of-the-box experience and workflow in its own way. To integrate this new asset library system with the internet, a new type of asset library will be added called Remote Asset Libraries, coming with pre-configured one called online essentials and will basically contain CC0 assets, meaning free to use and modify assets, including crucial resources like base mesh, materials, and even brushes, which will probably enhance the user experience of the software in general, hopefully. The asset libraries can now more or less be considered as extensions. Therefore, you may access some of them from Blender extensions platform, such as new specialized libraries, covering content from Blender's open movies. However, even if considered as extensions and sharing the same internet policy, the fact remains that extensions and asset libraries will still continue independently, one way or another. I mean, we should expect the operation of an asset library tab to be added in the 4.3 version of Blender, where you can have plenty of remote asset libraries that you will probably be able to add later after the official release of 4.3. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more interesting news like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.